We must now move on to questions to the Minister for Regional Development. Questions 1 and 2 have been withdrawn. I call Mr Oliver Mike Mullen. Mr Mike Mullen. Have a tree. Question 3. Mr Deputy Speaker, I published the draft uh, bicycle strategy for Northern Ireland on the 27th of August for a 12-week uh, period of public consultation. A series of public consultation events are ongoing. Uh, they will end in the middle of November of this year. Um, and that includes, uh, they include a number of events in rural areas. My strategy recognises uh, that there are differences between using the bicycle in an urban area and a rural area, and clearly states that we will continue to make provision for the bicycle in rural areas where opportunities arise, especially where there is cycling demand. Once the bicycle strategy has been finalised, a delivery plan will be prepared. This plan will be subject to uh, a rural proofing exercise to ensure that the needs of rural communities and areas are considered as part of the policy development process. Uh, I also look forward uh, to uh, the member's own response to the consultation. Mr. McMullen, for supplementary. Can I thank the minister for his response? Um, has the, can the minister tell me, has his department uh, engaged with the counterparts in the south to look at cross-border cycling uh, provisions? Grateful to the, uh, to the member, uh, and uh, I, I can indeed uh, say that, that we are looking at uh, areas where we can um, learn from each other or, or compare uh, on particular schemes, uh, and certainly uh, that level of cooperation and the potential for it uh, um, uh, is there. I haven't had an opportunity yet to discuss that at ministerial level with my new uh, ministerial counterpart, but uh, um, I, I think there are areas whereby we can uh, shared information would be of use, uh, and I would be hopeful that, uh, that we could make progress on it. Mr. Robin Swan for supplement. Thank you very much, Mr. Principal Speaker. Deputy Speaker. Minister, what prospects are there of securing EU funding for cycling projects? I am grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question and, and indeed, um, uh, and in relation I suppose, to my response to the last question, um, including uh, cross-border projects, um, there, are, uh, there is a potential in terms of uh, the projects from, from Murray to Dundalk uh, and in Armagh along the Ulster Canal. Uh, my department is working uh, with various other government departments and district councils to explore uh, the opportunities for uh, EU funding. Um, it is early days uh, in this process, but I'm hopeful that we will be able to secure funding for sustainable transport uh, projects, including walking and cycling projects. Um, officials uh, continue to work with colleagues in Scotland and the, Repub uh, and the Republic of Ireland to secure funding for cycling infrastructure including Greenways and the Waterside Hub in Londonderry. Mr Gregory Campbell. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, I appreciate the, the Minister's uh, support and intent behind the, uh, the proposals, but would he look at and examine the possibility where it is practical and possible to do so, that in urban areas particularly where there is a possibility of newly uh, placed 20 mile per hour traffic zones, that the, uh, the cycleways could run uh, in uh, coordination with those zones to minimise the possibility and impact for uh, traffic accidents and for pedestrians? thank the member for his uh, supplementary question, and, I, uh, and uh, I think he makes an important point. Um, my uh, ambition is such that I, that I do want to see um, the, uh, the improvement to the overall infrastructure that, that, that currently exists. And, and certainly, it is not simply a matter of, of planning with new schemes, but I think the, the existing uh, infrastructure uh, in many ways is quite weak. Uh, and I think um, the, uh, the cycling lobby, if you like, um, uh, continue to make representations, which I am very sympathetic to. Um, these issues, of course, are not without cost. Um, and it's important that, uh, uh, that, that I feel that I have the, the support, the political support going forward uh, in securing much-needed uh, finance uh, for schemes of this nature. To Chris Little. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Minister recently announced uh, drawbacks in relation to roads maintenance connected with budgetary reductions. Is that likely to impact on cycle network maintenance also? 
Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member, and I know that he himself is a, is a keen uh, cyclist, and, and, and uh, I think he's newly appointed on to the Committee for Regional Development. Look forward to a positive contribution uh, in relation to all of these issues. Um, <clears throat> I do uh, want to uh, emphasise uh, uh, my desire for a cycling uh, revolution uh, uh, as we go forward. And yes, there are short-term funding issues that uh, we need to be aware of, but the wider um, uh, aspects of this uh, and, and our wider ambitions, we should not lose sight of, of where we want to go with this to improve the infrastructure, new and existing, uh, and to encourage more sustainable modes of transport that will enable people uh, to feel safe uh, as they cycle or indeed as they walk through uh, our urban areas, but also our rural areas. Call Mr. Sammy Wilson for a question. Question number four. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the value of my department's uh, resource contracts uh, for roads maintenance that are dependent on additional resources being allocated is some £12.5 million. Uh, the following activities will be affected uh, carriageway uh, patching, uh, footway and carriageway patching, grass cutting, environmental ma ma maintenance, gully emptying, repair of street lighting outages, road marking maintenance and renewal and traffic sign maintenance and replacement. In terms of bidding in October, um, uh, a deduction has to be made for the value of work that could actually be delivered within the available time. The value of the, of the February 2015 bid will largely be dependent on the outcome of October monitoring, making further allowances for what could be delivered by year end. Um, road maintenance works are undertaken by external contractors and my own uh, department's operations and, and maintenance staff. Therefore, any additional requirement uh, is a combination of what is required to allow my operations and maintenance staff to operate efficiently, plus what is required to pay external contractors. Mr. Wilson, for supplementary. I can understand the um, importance to the finances of the executive of having contracts which can soak up money if it comes available at the last moment. But would the minister not agree with me that such core areas of his department should not be financed on the basis of the, a hope on a wing and a prayer that money might become available in monitoring rounds? And why has he organised the financing of, of uh, these projects in this particular way, rather than have it as part of his core budget, where he can be assured of the money. Uh, I'm grateful to the, to the member for his uh, supplementary question. I'm slightly curious in that, uh, in a not too uh, recent past, uh, uh, he was finance minister and uh, operated the system uh, that uh, that I have inherited and have tried to make uh, best use of. Uh, and uh, the member uh, wasn't in the House for the earlier debate uh, on uh, the financial position and the, uh, particularly the pressures on my resource budget uh, that took place uh, uh, this morning. Um, and we had contributions, ten contributions in all. All of them, I have to, with the exception of one, Mr. Beggs, uh, critical. Uh, but no one providing ideas or alternative solutions. And indeed, um, had he been here, he would have heard my uh, uh, assertion that uh, I don't believe this is the way to do business in terms of the budget generally and in specific to uh, regional development and road and transport issues. I think we would be better planning at the earlier stage for the amounts that we should uh, and are entitled to receive, and that would give us um, more value for money and more buck for a bang for our buck, uh, and I'm glad now that uh, now that he's out of office, uh, the, the finance minister, the former finance minister, recognises that. Robert, um, can I ask the minister what proportion of these cuts are from outside contractors, and what proportion are from road of cuts? Are they from road service staff, and how much money would be involved? Gormagut. Well, I have indicated uh, that um, the, the, the cutbacks, the savings that we've had to have made, um, have, have been principally uh, had to be directed against the use of external contractors, uh, and of course uh, that that doesn't come without impact 
on, on those businesses and indeed those employees. These are not decisions that I have taken lightly or that I uh, uh, would want to, uh, to, to have done. But uh, at, at, at the time, uh, these decisions, um, almost halfway through uh, the financial year, uh, these cuts were imposed. Uh, and that, for, uh, frankly, is bonkers. Uh, that, that, that any department should be uh, asked to affect savings of this nature at, this, uh, at that point in time. And it highlights the fundamental flaw uh, in the way that, that budgets uh, are arranged and confirmed, as well uh, as the, the issues that, that, that have compounded it, i.e. The, uh, the, the controversies over welfare reform. So um, all of these issues are, are, are in play. I find myself um, having to deal with the situation, and the, the only course of action available to me was to cut back in the use of external contractors. I will continue to bid uh, in the remaining monitoring rounds, and I will um, uh, continue to remind uh, executive colleagues uh, of the, the impacts that, that these cutbacks are having. Mr. Dominic Bradley. My August last concordia August Kumbekas Lishinara Sakta Ragra. Thanks very much, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for his answer. Um, could I ask the Minister how he ensures that health and safety standards are maintained under the current funding regime? Well I'm um, <laughs> Grateful to uh, for the for the supplementary question that the member has asked, um, and clearly health and safety has to be uh, an issue that I'm aware of, uh, and it is uh, um, it is the paramount uh, issue as to how we continue to uh, protect people, uh, both in the work that we do uh, and and the way that it is done, uh, and so I I do have, um, I mean my, my operations and maintenance staff will endeavour. Uh, to keep the road network in as safe as condition uh, as possible. Um, but they only have resources to complete around three quarters of the total routine maintenance uh, workload on roads. Uh, and, and again, uh, in the case of street lighting outages, our in house staff can only complete a much smaller percentage of the overall wor uh, uh, <laughs> workload. Um, I do consider this to be a serious issue, and I have asked my officials to seek formal legal advice on it. Mrs. Joanne Dobson for a question. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Question number five. I thank the member for her question. Uh, the design process uh, was completed at the end of August uh, 2014 uh, to ensure some off street car parking was retained by Transport NI. Translink has been trying to acquire a small corner of land from an adjacent landowner. The negotiations uh, for this piece of land are ongoing. Um, the site is leased to a local well-known retailer, but is privately owned. This uh, necessitates Translink uh, having to get agreement from the retailer and the owner. Uh, the retailer which leases the site has agreed to the layout which um, Translink supplied. The current design plan is based upon use of most of the car park at Kenless Street using uh, some uh, 53 of the 74 available spaces. Given that there is some uncertainty about the landowner's intentions, TransLink has proactively discussed with Transport NNI uh, an alternative option to the potential uh, uh, use nearly um, uh, the full car park. Um, it would be my intention that work can begin uh, on the project in 2015. Mr. Dobson for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Minister for his answer and welcome the action he is taking to progress this project? It's the first time the people of Bambridge will have a bus station, a facility which has been lacking in the town for far too long. Would the Minister agree with me that this is an example of the Ulster Unionist Party listening to the real priorities of people in Bambridge and, like this and other projects, Holding good to their promise to deliver. I'm grateful to the uh, to, to the member for uh, her supplementary question, and indeed pay tribute to her for for her for her doggedness in pursuing this uh, uh, as uh, as an issue, because this is a very important issue, uh, not only to uh, uh, the the the, uh, the people in Banbridge and, and particularly those uh, who use public transport. 
uh, but also uh, to, the, to the wider area, given the important network that Banbridge uh, serves uh, in that part of Northern Ireland. And of course, uh, the member is right, and, and uh, I take considerable pride that having listened uh, to the representations made by Banbridge Council and all their representatives over the years, uh, including herself, that we are at last beginning to see progress. I'm determined that we'll continue with that. Uh, and I hope very much that uh, the Ulster Unionist Party will get the credit it duly deserves. <laughs> Mrs. Dolores Kelly. Certainly, uh, Deputy Speaker, I look forward to the cutting of the sod next year because that's really what we're hearing. Uh, <laughs> but given Ministry did say there would be a loss of car parking uh, places and that um, th there was a hope that there would be an extension of the number of places throughout the north in terms of park and ride, are there any additional facilities uh, then planned to offset uh, those spaces that will be lost through the place of the Bambridge bus station? Well, I'm grateful uh, to the member uh, for her encouragement uh, to, to see the scheme brought successfully uh, to a conclusion. And who knows, she may even get an invite to the sod uh, cutting. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we got into trouble earlier with uh, Kieran McCarthy, who objected that the Alliance Party had been uh, overlooked uh, on one previous occasion. But anyway, um, the uh, issue of park and ride um, is an important one province-wide. Um, not just in the, in the Banbridge area or in the uh, general Upper Ban area. And we're always looking at opportunities whereby we can uh, improve those facilities because we see the benefit to the travelling public um, of providing such facilities. If the member has particular sites that uh, she wants to pass on that we can look at and investigate, happy to uh, hear from her. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And, uh, Thank the Minister for those responses, and uh, certainly has to be welcomed. Any uh, of our towns in Upper Ban that uh, get a, a bus station uh, facility, and I would welcome anything going into to Ban Bridge. But there's other towns in Upper Major towns in Upper Ban as well, Minister, and there's been much lobbying uh, has went on in the likes of Portadown, and I'm sure Lurgan as well. But uh, can, can you tell us what future there are for those towns? Because I'm sure you're, you and your department well knows that the lobbying has went on for, for uh, bus facilities. And uh, just to, to say that I and others within my party have been at the, uh, the forefront of lobbying for bus facilities in, in, Bal in Balmbridge as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, grateful to the member for his, uh, his question and indeed success as many authors. Um, failure can sometimes largely be, a fa uh, be an orphan. but. Um, uh, I do want to assure him that, um, and indeed uh, the members from other constituencies, that uh, we are seeking to improve the overall infrastructure uh, of, the, of the travelling public, and that is in terms of upgrading uh, stations, be they bus stations or rail stations. And we've had some success in that, and uh, members uh, will, will remember Balamoni and Antrim as examples of that. Uh, and so uh, we continue to, to, to roll those forward. Some of this uh, is, is largely dependent on, on finance, and as I said earlier to his, uh, his party colleague, uh, be very pleased indeed uh, to see um, uh, the, you, you, both you and, and your party really uh, put uh, your money where your mouth is. Um, I have to remind the member, talks cheap but takes money to buy whiskey. <laughs> Question number six. Uh, as the member will be aware, in order to meet pressures in my department's uh, resource budget, I, I had to take difficult um, uh, decisions uh, uh, to stop issuing new work instructions to external contractors for routine maintenance activities, including gully emptying. In the Fermanagh area, gully emptying on the urban and main roads uh, was carried out by an external contractor with operations and maintenance staff providing this service on the minor road network. Going forward, uh, operations and maintenance staff will endeavour to fill the gap left by the unavailability of contractor resources. However, this will mean uh, service levels will be reduced to around uh, three quarters of normal. Um, all gullies in, in this area were cleaned as normal before uh, the cuts were imposed, and I would be hopeful that the area should remain fairly free 
of drainage problems in, uh, in normal circumstances in the short term. Uh, my operational and maintenance staff will endeavour to prioritise gully cleaning uh, and dealing with known flooding area problems. Uh, we seek to prioritise those areas to ensure they are protected as far as we can. If flooding does occur, operations and maintenance staff will be deployed as resources permit to deal with any problems that may arise across the county. Mr. Flanagan, for supplementary. I will ask and I thank the Minister for his answer. The Minister says that he had to take difficult decisions, but I challenge him and say that he took the easy decision. You know, this was the easy cut to make. It would have been much more uh, progressive for the Minister to say we are going to stop giving the Redcoats a handout to give people a fine to park in our, our town centres. Can, 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 can I ask the Minister, um, does he accept that, that uh, this decision not to carry out gully cleaning leads to road safety issues where there is now water lying on the side of our roads and people travelling our roads, maybe at speed, um, will end up in a hedge on the other side of the road by accident as a result of hitting this lying water? Grateful to the, uh, to the member and, and, uh, and I respectfully say to him, I am not sure that he is in a, in a position to lecture on, on economics given his performance on the Nolan programme <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Uh, and uh, seem to have a, a serious uh, issue understanding um, finances and, 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 how, order, and how finance works. Order, please, but I remind everyone that my function is to chair the meeting and no one else. Continue, Minister. Uh, I, I, I do not accept uh, and uh, will not accept that, that I took uh, soft option uh, decisions uh, in, in, at the end of July. And again, if the member had been, had been present for the earlier debate uh, and had any knowledge or interest in it, um, he would have heard a full and detailed explanation. And perhaps, rather than the, uh, than the member uh, fulfil his ongoing desire to fill the airwaves and social media with his views, it might pay him to listen a little more. Yeah. Well, Mr. Roy begs for a question. Question number seven. The um, 130 million pounds, 14 kilometres long, um, A8 duelling scheme uh, is 25 months through its 34-month uh, programme. Construction uh, is progressing very well and is approximately 75 per cent complete. Uh, to date, approximately 2 million cubic metres uh, of earthworks material uh, has been excavated, including over 500,000 cubic metres of rock. Uh, the road paving operation is continuing with around 180,000 tonnes of material laid to date, and all eight bridges along the scheme are now uh, substantially complete, and three of the eight structures are open to two-way traffic. It is uh, expected that the new A8 dual carriageway will open to traffic by the end of May 2015, and landscaping work will continue until December 2015. Mr Beggs, for supplementary. The, the, the investment will improve uh, transport linkages from the Port of Larne to the M1 and the M2 and so to throughout Northern Ireland and even the Republic of Ireland and the trade that exists between uh, that part and Scotland and the north of England in particular. And I hope new jobs will develop in the Larne area. But can the Minister uh, outline uh, what uh, health and safety improvements he will see for, for roads users uh, as a result of this investment? and the effect on journey time uh, to the Port of Larne. I am grateful to the, uh, to the member for his uh, supplementary question and indeed pay tribute to him uh, and uh, 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 the lobbying that he has undertaken uh, to uh, ensure that this scheme has been finally brought forward. And it has been a long time uh, uh, in the making and indeed uh, his father uh, was uh, a very strong uh, advocate and um, supporter of this particular scheme. Um, I, I, I see it as having huge potential, not just to the Port of Larne, but to uh, the economic uh, regeneration, uh, the uh, better connectivity uh, to that uh, area of Northern Ireland. I am sure that that will improve business opportunities, uh, and I am very hopeful that, uh, that we can move forward uh, uh, on that basis and that it will improve um, the econ economic lot of, of the people who live there uh, and the people who work there. Well, Mr. Trevor Clark. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And, um, can I say to the Minister, whilst there is benefits to the A8, and I think everyone should welcome that, but can the Minister outline to the House what the additional cost in terms of bypassing Ballinure, as opposed to actually keeping it online, would have, uh, much that would have saved? 
Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the uh, member for his supplementary and, and uh, uh, take the opportunity to congratulate him on his recent appointment as chair of the uh, Committee for Regional Development and indeed pay tribute to the, the former, the past chairman, uh, Mr Spratt. Um, I think we, I mean, I have to say uh, re respectfully that I, I think we are past the issue of uh, the Ballynure bypass and, uh, and, and the route that was uh, chosen. Uh, there was careful consideration given to all of those issues at the time, through the, including through the public inquiry. Uh, and I am satisfied and optimistic that uh, when completed, uh, people will see and understand the full benefits of the scheme that we are bringing forward. Mr. Uh, Ogget, um, along with the fellow DRD committee members, we visited there last week and looked on very endlessly at the wonderful carriageway. And I was intrigued speaking to the contractors at some of the very complicated environmental issues that you had to deal with, including rerouting uh, a river from its traditional route. So I just want to know, was there any particular lessons that you have picked up uh, from that scheme that may be applied to other large scale schemes such as the A5 and others uh, in the future? Thank you uh, for your uh, question. I think I will resist the temptation to uh, uh, infer that you may have learned more about um, traditional routes and uh, uh, not uh, seeking to change them uh, that, uh, on a political basis rather than a, uh, a road building basis. But anyway, well, we're not talking about that. Um, I, I think uh, what we have been uh, um, very careful to, to ensure that environmental issues have been have been dealt with uh, in terms of this. I'm satisfied that they, they, they've been given proper consideration and that um, the, the, perhaps even the additional expense um, incurred as a result of such environmental uh, changes um, are worthwhile and are worth uh, bearing with in terms of the overall benefits to the, to the wider community. Call Mr Sidney Anderson for a question. Question 8, Deputy Speaker. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, as you will be aware, following an announcement, announcement on June monitoring, my department's uh, resource budgets that are used for the day-to-day -day maintenance uh, of the road network have been cut. As a result, I have had no option uh, other than to stop issuing uh, new work instructions to our contractors, uh, who currently undertake around one quarter of our essential work in the following areas, <laughs> footway and carriageway patching, uh, including potholes, grass cutting, environmental maintenance. Uh, gully emptying, road marking, maintenance and renewal, and traffic sign maintenance and uh, replacement. Uh, as I have said, my department's in-house operations and maintenance staff will endeavour to keep the road network in as safe a condition as possible. Uh, however, they have only the resources to complete around three quarters of the total workload. They will not be able to provide the service that the public would expect in normal circumstances. In addition, um, <coughs> I have been left with no funding to pay contractors for the repair of street lights that fail unless they pose an electrical hazard to members of the public. Currently, I can tell the House that some 7,900 street lights are out across Northern Ireland and outages are rising at a, race, uh, at a rate of around 1,000 per week. My operations and maintenance staff are dealing with outages on a priority basis, however, they only have around one quarter of the resource. Uh, required to provide normal service. So these have been difficult uh, decisions to make, but they are necessary in, to, uh, in order to try and protect areas such as winter service, uh, where withdrawal of our work would have an even greater impact on the Northern Ireland economy and the public. Um, I realise that these measures impact on contractors, road users and the public, but I do have to make the best use of my department's limited resources. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, for that. I thank the Minister for that uh, very detailed response and uh, those alarming uh, statistics that he's telling us today. And I think that uh, there are issues there that need to be addressed and addressed urgently. Would the Minister agree with me that a failure to repair potholes and other similar road uh, defects and damage, mainly on the small rural roads, uh, would only lead to more accidents and do lead to more accidents? and therefore more insurance claims, and as such, would it not therefore be prudent to ensure that adequate funding is used to carry out the repairs to those potholes and that road maintenance as soon as they are discovered? Thank you. Thank the member for his um, supplementary question. 
And, and indeed, I, I, I can't disagree with the sentiments that he expresses. Uh, it might well be that I will print off the answer to, uh, of his uh, supplementary question just to uh, uh, and direct it towards uh, colleagues in the executive, perhaps even his party colleague, the finance minister, because I, I, I do believe that there. Um, this is money that will, the, these cuts and these savings that have to be affected at this time w uh, have the potential to cost even more into the future. And that is not good, it doesn't make good economic sense. So I welcome uh, the sentiments that he's heard and I hope that uh, um, he will follow those through even with uh, his own party colleagues. Order. That ends the period for listed questions. We will now move on to topical questions, and I call Mr. Sammy Douglas. Mr. Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, following on from the, the publication of the Minister's draft bicycle strategy, would the Minister outline any plans he has to improve the Ballymacarrot walkway section of the Cumber Greenway at Hollywood Arches? Please. <clears throat> well, I'm grateful to the, uh, uh, to the member um, for. Uh, and he doggedly pursues this, I have to say. Um, I know that he is also a keen cyclist. Um, and I do also welcome um, his support for my vision of increasing the use of the bicycle throughout Northern Ireland. Um, and he knows uh, also from his own cycling uh, experience, as some others do too, that the Cumber Greenway is one of the best pieces of cycling infrastructure that we have in Northern Ireland. And I am very keen uh, to see it developed further. Um, the, the draft uh, bicycle strategy picks up the theme of a comprehensive network for the bicycle and highlights the need to create um, a network of high quality and direct joined up routes. My cycling unit has started working on, on scoping out a bicycle network for the city of Belfast and it will undoubtedly include um, the, the, uh, uh, the Cumber Greenway. I'm keen to ensure that the Cumber Greenway links more effectively from the area around Hollywood Arches to the city centre, and this would improve, uh, uh, would include improved links into the Conswater Community Greenway in the vicinity uh, of the Ballymacarrot walkway, and also improvements to the Greenway at various points along its length. Douglas, for supplement. Deputy Speaker, could I thank the Minister for his answer thus far? Uh, the Minister may be aware that there were some rumours going about that there was a potential for a road to go through that area. So, could I ask the Minister con to confirm his commitment to retaining Ballymacart Walkway as a walking and cycling route? Well, I, I, I have been made aware of, uh, of some of the uh, rumours. Uh, I think it's unfortunate that such rumours have emerged. Um, certainly, uh, under my watch, I have no uh, intention of, of changing the status, and, 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 uh, uh, and, uh, and I don't see it in any way other than being um, a walkway and a cycling highway. Mr. Jimmy Spratt for a question. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, given that the uh, winter uh, road green programme is the core business of DRD staff uh, and not uh, external contractors, will he guarantee that? Uh, Gridine will continue on the basis that it did on previous years on all of the designa designated routes. Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for his, um, uh, his question. Uh, I think it is timely, uh, and I think um, of, all the, of all the services that uh, Transport NI uh, provide, and indeed my department provide, I think winter services are looked upon as key and essential. Um, and uh, certainly, um, you know, this is a challenging budgetary uh, period. Uh, discussions are not yet concluded. He will know the executive is to have further discussions even uh, within the next 24 hours, and they will presumably be going, uh, ongoing. But it certainly, it is, my, uh, it, uh, it is my intention to protect winter services because I understand whilst there is no statutory obligation to provide them, I think it is important and they are expected in terms of uh, the general public uh, to see that winter services are pro provided to the maximum that they can be, and that remains my position. Mr Spratt, for supplementary. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for that answer. But given that the province has already this year suffered 62 fatalities, both he and I stood in this House uh, last year during the winter programme. Uh, 
uh, con uh, having uh, sent our condolences to a family uh, of, of a, a man killed just outside Sinfield in County Down, will he try to ensure that uh, staff uh, continue to look at the weather reports and make sure that the gridding takes place? Because on a few occasions last year, that didn't happen. I'm grateful to the uh, to the member, and, and, and clearly. All of, the, all of the fatalities on our roads represent real tragedies to the families involved, uh, and we should never underestimate that. Uh, and uh, can I extend my personal sympathy, and that uh, I'm sure of the entire House, to all of those who have even uh, of recent days um, uh, have, have uh, lost loved ones as a result of um, uh, road fatalities. Obviously, um, investigations take place into each. Um, uh, accident or fatality uh, and into the reasons and the causes and so therefore it's not proper for me to comment on that but in terms of, of the winter services that we provide I think it is uh, essential that um, it is a service that people look to and expect but also um, benefit from um, but of course Salted Road doesn't um, absolutely mean and ensure that um, it is free from accident and so uh, it is essential also that uh, due care and attention on behalf of road users uh, is taken uh, at every opportunity. Call Mrs. Karen McEvitt for a topical question. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, can I ask the Minister if he can provide an anti flood commitment to the residents of Claremont Gardens um, and Charlotte Street areas of Warren Point following the opening of the new pumping station um, by NI Water? I am grateful to the, uh, to the member for her, uh, her question. And indeed, um, I, I think uh, there has been some correspondence uh, in th th through assembly questions by her on, on, on this uh, issue. Um, uh, obviously, the, the, the new scheme uh, in place uh, will uh, uh, benefit um, uh, local uh, householders and uh, uh, local businesses. Um, it is not yet clearly established uh, in, in terms of the flooding incident that took place um, uh, recently in that area that it was solely the cause or the impact of, of the new treatment work or, or the, the works that have been carried out. I am still waiting on, on uh, final confirmation uh, of that investigation, uh, and I will, of course, uh, make that available uh, to the member and share that with her. Ms. McCabot for supplement. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, if the pumping station proves effective, Minister, um, in areas of the Charlotte Street area and Mary Street, uh, Neary Street, sorry, and they're considered an, uh, the floods no longer at risk, that area is no longer at risk of flooding. Um, will your department support um, the amendment of the flood maps in the area so that uh, the families living in that area and businesses uh, can avail of uh, full protection through their insurance companies? Well, I'm grateful to the uh, member for her supplementary uh, uh, question. And of course, um, it is an important um, uh, consideration to say that uh, whilst uh, new wastewater treatment works improve um, the, the services that are, uh, that are provided in terms of waste and sewage and, and, and water supply and all of that, um, uh, they, they alleviate, they do not completely eradicate uh, the risk of flooding. Uh, and you know, the member, I think, will be conscious of that. Uh, nevertheless, I do of course sympathise with anyone um, whose home has been impacted um, as a consequence of internal flooding, and uh, it's not something that I would wish uh, in my own house, uh, and I certainly want to, wouldn't want it to see it um, imposed uh, on others. So uh, that's why uh, that is the importance of bringing forward uh, schemes, not only in the Warren Point area, but uh, in other parts uh, of, of Northern Ireland. And that's the importance too that we maintain the budget uh, going forward of, of, of NI Water, so it can provide and uh, improve the facilities, not only drinking water but also wastewater facilities, um, so, uh, so that we can alleviate um, uh, the, the risk of flooding. Well, Mr. Mike Nesbitt for a uh, Thank you, Speaker. Uh, would the minister give the House his assessment of the current budgetary pressures uh, on his department? Well, grateful to the member for his, uh, his question. And, and, uh, in June monitoring, um, uh, um, executive ministers, excluding health and education, were asked to make reductions of 2.1 and 2.3 per cent this year to provide 
uh, more money for health uh, and cover the cost uh, of the non-implementation of welfare reform and patch over uh, poor financial management uh, at the centre of the executive. The, the failure to give notice of cuts or to allow them to be planned for over a four-year period has made those cuts deeper than they otherwise might have been, and this has meant areas that could have uh, otherwise have been protected now at risk. Uh, for that, uh, that has meant, as I've said, uh, in answers. Uh, I've had to pause the issue of work to external contractors impacting on street light repairs, gully emptying and grass cutting. I don't take any pleasure uh, in having to take these tough decisions, but I've done so in the full knowledge of the potential implications. Let me make it absolutely clear again. I bid for an additional £48 million in resource funding in June, funding that could have been properly spent um, but, uh, in my department this year. I received less than the shortfall on concessionary fares, uh, and I have to say uh, parties headed by uh, members of Sinn Féin and DUP did much better than that. Mr Desmond, for supplement. Thank you, Speaker. And I thank the Minister for that answer. I also acknowledge his exchange with Mr Spratt uh, on the winter service. Can I ask him to go further and be specific and tell the House that the, the winter service and concessionary fares are red lines for him going forward? I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member uh, for, his, uh, for his supplementary question. And indeed, uh, I believe um, I, I could not sustain uh, and could not advocate in due, with due conscience any cuts uh, that would savage the winter service programme or indeed affect or impact the concessionary, uh, uh, concessionary fair scheme. Therefore, uh, I am very happy to signal that they are red line issues as far as I am concerned as a member of this executive. Well, Mr Roy Bay. Uh, this week, guide dogs from the blind are celebrating their 30 years in Northern Ireland uh, in assisting those who are blind or uh, visual impairments. So, can the Minister provide an update on the provision of audiovisual information, real time information, to improve the travelling experience of the general public, but with those with sight impairments in particular? I am grateful to the uh, member for his question, and indeed uh, uh, it is timely because uh, just yesterday in, in the Long Gallery and in the front uh, of Parliament buildings we were able uh, to join with others and, and, and celebrate uh, 30 years of um, guide dogs in Northern Ireland. Uh, and, uh, I think that was, uh, it was a real delight for me uh, to, to share in that and to witness uh, at first hand uh, the work again of guide dogs. And I know the member himself has been closely uh, identified with that, as indeed all the members of this House. I, I, I was also pleased at that, on that occasion to, to be able to announce that we will, uh, my department will progress audio-visual services on our metro services, bus services. I think it is hugely important that we make public transport available and accessible to as many people as possible. It is important for positive health benefits and uh, the reduction of social uh, inclusion, um, uh, exclusion. Um, I am proud uh, to be uh, the Minister delivering this important investment in public transport. Perhaps that is more interesting I, I could listen to. But anyway, uh, I am proud to be the Minister delivering uh, this important investment in public transport and uh, important investment in supporting those who are blind and partially sighted. Mr Beggs, for supplement. Previously, um, in questions, the Minister was indicating the significant financial pressures that he and his departments ha have faced. So how has he been able to uh, afford this expenditure? Well, I uh, th thank the member uh, uh, for his question. And again, um, that we uh, have made clear to the Regional Development Committee that I plan to use any revenue uh, generated by those committing uh, moving traffic offences to, to reinvest this and support audio uh, visual uh, systems. Uh, and I hope very much that uh, the, the Regional Development Committee will, will, will support me in that as we move forward. Um, I think the provision of audio-visual services on buses will not only benefit those who are blind and partially sighted. Audio-visual uh, will be of use to visitors and tourists also. Uh, and I, I see it as a real enhancement to our public transport system that will help many people and many passengers uh, in, the years, uh, in the years to come. Time is up.